Good morning and welcome to Spiritual Glam. On today's show, we are going to be on verses Revelation 1 through 6. And we're going to also skim through verses 6 through 17. God is a good God. He has message for us every day, really. And I understand that in this time, he's going to do things that we can't even comprehend because he loves us he cares for us for all humanity and he's going to use the believers to strengthen the world yep we're actually going to start being light we're actually going to start doing things that god has ordained even before we were born and in this time like i was saying in yesterday's episode which I am going to upload as soon as I upload this one because I feel that it's important to have one already in mind to continue to the next. The first one was called Holy Marriage and now this was called Holy Birth. And God has really given me specific ways on how to describe and foretell what is happening in scripture throughout this time? Revelations is a book, is the last book of the Bible, which actually tells and explains about the coming of Christ. So when I received this word this morning, I understood that God wants to speak to us, encourage us, and let us know that yes, he is returning soon, and yes, it's gonna be spectacular. But he wants us to let everybody know. And the way everybody's going to know, like I was saying yesterday, is by signs and wonders. Because people today on earth can see one sign that you do can be video and streamed and the whole world can see it. So I understand that God is really moving in a great way in this time. And we just got to get ready to be in the flow of that spiritual wave that's coming through. So let's pray and then we'll go ahead and jump right into the word. And I'll explain everything that God has laid on my heart today to share with everyone that is going to be tuning in today or in the days to come. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you do. I... Pray, Father Lord, that this word that you have put on my heart, Father, that you would really take it to the extreme. Let it work extremely in everybody's heart who hears this. Let them be able to encounter a special word, Father Lord, that you would give, Father Lord, in today's message. Father, that I would not put anything that doesn't come from you in this message, not a word, not a thought, not a feeling, that it would be completely you, 100%, using me, Father Lord, to be able to give this message, which is important to you and important to the church, important even to the people who don't recognize or acknowledge you, Father Lord. So I pray that in the name of Jesus, Father, you would rescue those people, Father Lord, that need the rescuing with this message and that you would prevail and promote them to continue in your ways and to continue pressing in and strengthening those that need your strength on this day and just really doing what only you can do by dividing this message a thousand ways into different people's hearts so that they can understand what is the hope of your calling and what is coming up next in this world. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we are going to start with verses 1. Again, we are on Revelation 12, verse 1 through 6. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. 
and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up into god and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a two thousand two hundred and three score days we are gonna start off first with these verses just like in yesterday's episode we are talking about clothing we are talking about that the woman is clothed with the Sun the Sun is bright the Sun is a light the Sun is necessary just like in yesterday, we explained that God wants us to be dressed up like the light that we are, like the holy um, priesthood that we are. This is moving in the direction of sanctification. Not anyone can have these clothing. This clothing with, with the light is specifically from God. We receive from God to be able to complete things here that we need to do on earth now we have purpose and in that purpose we need to be empowered we need to be anointed because we in our humanity can are not capable of completing it so again the sun is very bright it's the brightest light so the church is the light of the world and it says remember it says in the bible that it says when you whatever you bind here on earth is the same as in heaven so when we light up here it's going to be the same in heaven when we light up here and do the things we need to do and purposefully reach in and step into our destiny heaven is lit up lit up because people will see it people will notice it through us we have jesus christ in us the holy spirit and he represents heaven he is heaven so we have that in us and we can take it wherever we go so when the church represents jesus christ we could be as bright as the sun now we're going to move on to verse two and she being with child cried to railing in birth and pained to be delivered okay there is actually three stages in birth because what's going on in this text is that the church is going to give birth to the return of Jesus. Let me explain. In the first stage of birth, it lasts all the way to the woman is fully dilated, for real. I don't have a PhD, but I studied the different stages that the women have when they when they're gonna give birth, there's three different stages. It will stages. dilate to the full 10 centimeters. Imagine for a second that the church will be birthing the return of Jesus. Right now, the church is in labor pains. The church is going through persecution, is going through death. More and more times, they put different laws that completely come against the church. So yes, we are in times where we are going through labor, so to speak, in comparison to these three different stages of the process of when you come to a point of delivery. Now, I don't know about you, but if, you've, if you're a woman and you've been in birth, you know that you need an epidural so that you don't feel the contractions when they begin to get really strong now the contractions get really strong during kind of midway going up to the 10 centimeters now the epidural helps the woman why because during this time of her before she goes into the severe pains of pushing out the baby she's going to have anesthesia in that area where the pain is being caused. Now, in comparison to what God is gonna do in this time is that he is going to fill the church with power to produce and promote P 
people to walk in to their purpose because a lot of times we don't walk into our purpose because we are human minded we are earthly minded and we don't focus on what the spirit is telling us on what you, the holy spirit is telling us and that's an important part of our life because we are not just human we are spirit led as well we are not we're in the world but not from the world so that being said god in this season is giving a mercy call a mercy call is what i call what i say that it is is when my children get like into trouble or something and then i kind of decide not to punish them or discipline them i'll say i'm going to give you a mercy call i'm going to have mercy and i understand that god is having mercy on the world in this time because he's going to use his people to go ahead and his church believers to go ahead and do wonders and signs like we had spoken before in the episode before like in the times of old in the times where jesus was on earth because through jesus we could heal raise the dead expel demons conquer the enemy and through jesus we will be able to do signs and wonders now a lot of times we have doled down the power that we have inside because it's not frequently used in our church or very rarely we see that people speak too much or at all about the power of Christ. Now, we cannot talk about Christ if we don't talk about his power because when we say Christ, it is power. When we say Jesus, like it says in the Bible, every knee shall bow. So if every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus, how are you not going to talk about power when you speak about Jesus? And how are you not going to say that we as his children don't have power if Jesus is in us? Then Jesus is in us only to a certain point or it's kind of halfway or compromised? No, the Holy Ghost is in us. And with all his attributes and all the things and special gifts that God has laid in our hearts and produces in the relationship we have with him, that all belongs to us, not for us. Not for our glory, but from Jesus' glory, because we are going to extend the kingdom here on earth. So I understand that in this stage one, where the epidural is put in, it is as a mercy from God that he is going to elevate his people to promote his power here on earth. Yes. He will definitely use us to do greater things in this time because the earth needs to see who is the powerful one. The earth needs to see who is the one that rules and reigns. In verse 3, it explains, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and, he and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head the enemy the enemy does not want you to realize you got power you're going to realize that that circumstance you're in you have power and you can fast and you can pray and you can bring whatever you need to bring to pass with jesus you and jesus connected are the ones that do it jesus uses you for what he needs to use he fights your whatever battle he needs to fight for you but through you and with you you strategize and connect and complete the task that he needs that you need to bring to pass so on verse 3 it says the great red dragon so that's all we're going to say about that we don't i don't want to focus in on what he doesn't want or what the enemy is going to do or plans no we rebuke him in the name of jesus and we leave him to a side we're not going to give him much attention what we are going to do is press in to see what god wants to us to do in this time so on verse 4 and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast him to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born so immediately that you begin to walk in your purpose or produce the seed that God wants you to produce in your life, or better said, the harvest that God wants you to produce in your life, which is walking in your destiny, walking in the, the true identity of Christ, 
walking in everything that he has called and ordained for you, the enemy wants to devour it. It says it in the Bible that he is a roaring lion that is ready to destroy and devour. So he is ready to eat anything, destroy anything. And how does he destroy it? Through your mind, through giving you the thoughts, you can't do it, this is not true, you're crazy, whatever it is. But in the name of Jesus, we rebuke him. That's all we got to do. We got to rebuke him and pray. We don't need to go into much of a conversation with the enemy. We don't need to go into we this and we that. No, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get from me and pray to God in your circumstance. Ask him for help, for to send his angels to help you. We have God with us, which is mightier than any enemy can ever do to us. What any enemy can do to us. So we must really understand, and I understand that a lot of people don't really see that. And it's hard to see it because if we don't grab our minds and bring a focus to it, you know, it's hard for us to see that. But that's why God, I understand that God in this time is going to give his church power. Power so that we can overcome power so we can get to another level on that level that we need to be so that we can do all that he's called us to be before that point of delivery now the church will be the light like the sun and when we do that it brings in to birth throughout it brings into birth the return of jesus so the child as soon as it was born. Obviously, it cannot devour Jesus, but what the enemy wants to do is kill the power, or not kill, but omit, and not let you function in whatever you need to function in. Now, God is gonna back us up here. He's gonna send his power in a bigger and more extraordinary way that we haven't seen before. He's gonna do it, and when he does it, we will be giving birth to not only the return of Jesus, but we will be giving birth to all those dreams, all those things we've always wanted to do and we've never done them. Those beautiful and bright ideas and, and big dreams that you have that you've never completed, those are the ones that are gonna come to pass because God is gonna reinforce you and strengthen you for these end times. Now, on verse 5, we come into the second stage of birth. There's three stages. We spoke about the first one. Now we're speaking about the second one. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule over all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up onto God and to his throne. Now, as we birth our purpose and push towards the return of Jesus, the whole church will intricately be producing the glory of the lord through our new level kind of influences god is getting ready to lift up his people if you receive this or not if you say i don't know what she's talking about well then it's not for you but if you understand in your heart that you know that you're a child of god and you know that you have some dreams and some things that are undone and you know that it would be for the glory of the lord then in the name of jesus this is for you this is for you to understand that god put those dreams in you he wants you to trust him and have that faith like a child and step into the fullness of who you are he wants you to speak the truth and he wants you to break through those generational curses that keep following your generations. We are victorious in Christ, no matter what. No matter what circumstance or what we must overcome or what we did not overcome, we can still have the victory because God is the God of a turnaround. He can turn around things at any moment. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And that's why in the stage two, the climax begins where the woman births the child. 
and through the power that God will ignite his church and set us ablaze like fire, like the sun. Because the sun is not only light, it's ablaze and fiery. And that's what we need. We need fire because we can't do it alone. Right now, there's all sorts of demonic attacks on our people, on the believers, and on non-believers as well, but they can't really tell the difference because you have to come to an understanding for if you're a non-believer and you're watching this, there's good and there's evil everywhere. I mean, even in the movies, there's good and there's evil. Sometimes people will believe things of movies rather than things biblical that have weight, that have weight in that maybe you should think about it. Maybe you should give God that one minute of your time and say, you know what, things are going wrong in this world. And I kind of heard that Jesus, about Jesus, and I need you to let me know. And in this time, I understand that God is going to be revealing more of himself to the church and to the people that are on earth. So in this stage, right before his return, he wants to make, God wants to make sure that things are in order. So he will give us the strength by his glory we will do things like Jesus and we will receive that overwhelming power, that great victory in the body of Christ because the enemy will not take it away from us this time. He will try, but he cannot because the power of Jehovah Jireh himself is going to lie on us. And that's going to be because his return. Listen on Isaiah 66, 9. Do I bring the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I bring delivery, says your God? So whatever you need to accomplish your purpose, whatever you need to do what you need to do to be the light in this time, in this age, in this generation, God is going to give it to you. You need power, you got it. You need finances, you got it. You need this, he gives it. So that's what he's saying. Am I going to bring my church to the point where the return is going to come and I am not going to give you the power that you need to accomplish the goals that I have for you? No, that's not going to happen. God is going to give it to us. God is going to redeem us, save us, help us save others because no one wants to be here when the church leaves. No one. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak about that now. I'm going to speak about that now. I don't want to jump it before. It is a crucial moment of the church where God is going to equip you. But you have to believe. You have to believe that you, that God can use you. And it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, how long you've been away from him. You don't even know what I'm talking about. But if you have tuned in today by any chance, it's because God wants to speak to you. And I would challenge you to give him one minute. That's all he needs. One day in the presence of God is equal to a thousand without. So it's equal to years without him. One day. Right now... People are at home, you have this extra time on you where if you're not working from home, you could separate from your YouTube time or your other times that you do all these things and give one minute to God. That's all I'm saying. And it can change your life. It will dramatically change your life if you open your heart to him and tell him that you wanna know more about him and that you need to know what is going on in this world. And he will tell you. When you start pressing in and speaking to the God who made you, you got, you're going to be in for a surprise if you don't know about him. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to be in for a surprise because he is a great God. He loves you. He loves us. And he is such a best friend. He's not only a God far away. He's our best friend. He cares about any kind of pain that you're having in this moment, any kind of 
circumstance that's being heartbreaking to you. He cares any fear. He cares. That's why he tells you to give it to him. He doesn't want you. We weren't made to carry all these burdens and all these fears and all these things that, that don't, you know, that don't allow us to really live that life that God has for us, you know? So let's move on. On verse 6, I want us to point this out. I want to point this out. That on verse 6, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness. The devil comes, wants to devour the child. And then it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness because she brought forth a man, child. Let's go back, sorry. Let's go back on verse 5. She brought forth, so she, she delivered. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, when I was preparing the message, God was letting me know that, you know, when God returns, there's going to be the first where he's going to come get the church. Then that's what's going to be when all hell's going to be let loose here on earth. I know it's hard to understand this and it kind of looks like a sounds like a movie or something but if you read scripture that's what God is talking about and um, it says but they are those who stay okay now once Jesus returns once the church completes the part that they need to do they the Jesus returns but there will be people that will stay Yes, there is going to be people that are going to stay because they didn't accept Jesus in their heart. They maybe had a chance to accept them, and then they didn't. So there, God already knows those people that are going to stay. He already knows beforehand God is an all-knowing God. He's an omnipresent God. So he is in the past, present, and future. He is everywhere. So that being said... The seed that the church is going to leave is going to be when we leave, the people who stay, who heard, have heard about God but never accepted him or never made that decision to commit to him or whatever stage it is, will say, oh, I remember. And then through that in that moment, they're going to accept Christ, being here still on earth which things are going to be are going to be quite different. It's not like now that that Christ is in us and there's the church, the church will not be having any kind of political sanction, will not be protected. This is going to get crazy here. But before I jump into that, I want to say this is actually stage 3. Why? I thought to myself, how is there a stage three? The baby's already born. Jesus has already returned. But this is part of the redemption of the world, this third stage. In this third stage of the pregnancy, it, comparing it to the return and to what's happening in, in context here in Revelation, the placenta needs to be birthed. The placenta is what the baby was getting nutrients from so what the church left here in those people that maybe you've maybe someone has spoken to you about god but yet you haven't decided to follow god and or a believer speaking to a believer now maybe we've spoken to people they they still haven't decided remember we speak we leave the seed but god is the one that is is going to bring it to pass really we don't have to stress over it we do have to pray but we don't have to stress over if you speak to somebody about god and they reject it because they're rejecting god they're rejecting the the portion that god would want to give them if they accept them so for those people that stay it's not going to be pretty because they are going to realize oh i remember my neighbor when they spoke to me about this I remember my my brother, my sister, my spouse. Because if you don't have Jesus in your heart and you're not written in the book of life, you're you're not going. 
You're not going. So commit now. Do something about it now when we have a chance because whether you say that you think I don't know what I'm talking about or that this is things of fairy tales, it's not. It's actually very important to hear at this time. Not because of the virus or anything like that, but because, you know, there's a lot of things going on on Earth. And the world is corrupt. The world has gone whatever way it wants. And God doesn't want that. You know, God doesn't want that. So in the third stage, also, let, let's go back to verse 6. So the woman fled into the wilderness. That's going to be the wilderness. The people that stay... They will have, the church is going to have no rights. They are going to have politically no favor. So actually, the people that stay and have that seed will reproduce and be the church here. But it's not going to be like the church now. It's going to be very different. Okay, so the church leaves behind the nutrients for that woman that's going to represent the church here. So the church goes to the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her their 1,203 score. So there will be people here that will, in the, in the end times, that are going to stand up and be Christ followers. There will be people. I don't know how many. I, I'm not sure, and I don't know exactly when Christ is coming either. I'm just, in context, putting what God has revealed to me through his word. I'm not inventing nothing. I am on I am in the Bible reading and sharing the word that God has laid on my heart for whoever is tuning in today. And then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. So there's going to be a war and of course the devil's not going to prevail. But now the devil once that happens is going to re is going to birth his antichrist the antichrist will come into position and he will be a political leader that will lead the whole earth and not only that if we jump to okay and we haven't read these we haven't read these verses but um remember i said that we were going to kind of like skip through these other verses so i'm going to read it fast i'm on 10 revelation 12 10 and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our good our god day and night so devil the our accuser the church's accuser has been cast down now and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and their and they loved not their lives unto death. So when this happens, the enemy will go ahead, lift up someone, which is considered the Antichrist. And then he is going to unleash it. He is going to make and wreak havoc because he knows he will have no time left. So, he, so the dragon saw he was cast onto earth and he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. So again, the woman that stayed, the people that, ha that didn't decide to follow but in those end times will decide to follow because of all the turmoil and things that are going to go on. The woman, the people, considered the woman, will be that church that's here. And um, it says... You know the the enemy will is going to go to great length to remove you to make you quiet to not let you share the testimony of jesus because he wants everyone to be disgraced like him he wants everybody to go in and just do what he wants and do all the bad and then you know pay the price like he did so let me go back God is going to make sure that in this time, there will be no one that can say that they did not know or hear about God. There will always be a moment in our lives that we hear about God, that we see him in our life, 
that he does something even if you are a non-believer that he will do something to promote you to understand about him now if we want to accept it or not that is our decision that is our will our free will but in this time when the church has left and the others that stay become that church it will be very difficult for them to re to eat i'm sorry to eat and no one wants to be in that in that time it also explains on verses 13 to 17 revelation 12 verses 13 to 17 if you want to go back and read over it in this context and god can speak to you on a more per personal level that that's great i love to do that too when i hear a word so i'm going to read here what god laid on my heart explains so these verses verses 13 to 17 explain that the ones who stay will have to go into the hiding you saw how the woman went into the wilderness because of the antichrist the antichrist will pursue the church the antichrist will stop at nothing to get the seed that god leaves through the church third stage the placenta is birth and that is the the church the enemy is going to try to steal that seed too so not only will the church be weak god will leave that power god will leave that power so we can see so we can see the god that we serve it says every knee will bow every knee will notice but that seed can be robbed that seed can definitely be robbed from us from the people who become the church and you know it's 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 not going to be a, a pretty picture it's not going to be something that someone would anticipate to be the church in that time because at that time they'll be paying with their lives if not they have to receive the mark so it's either receive the mark of the devil or receive the holy spirit now now that is um i think it's a, a message that god wanted to share because of the times that we are in not a lot of times people like to dive into that book when god let me know about it i was like are you sure that you want me to speak about this but he he did he he wanted me to share the word because it's important that it's important that we realize especially the church that God is going to pour out uh, a bigger portion of his power in these end days so that we could promote other people to come to him and understand about him, understand how much he loves us and be awakened spiritually. But there is going to be people that are not. But don't you want you I, I'm sure you don't want to be one of those people. And I'm not saying here to do anything that you don't want to do all i'm saying is give god a minute of your time in these days where you're gonna have the time because we're actually at home have to be home we are quarantined we have to be home so i would just suggest that a great beginning for you a new beginning for you a non-believer someone who doesn't know about christ maybe um after this message is excited to hear about christ because we need to speak the truth and the church needs to say what's gonna happen because if we don't who will we can't keep sugarcoating the gospel yes he loves us yes he loves us he loves us but there has to come a time where you accept him where you acknowledge him because if you don't then things will happen and it won't be because of the church not speaking. It'll be because of the decision you made. Now, I would like to go ahead and lead first a prayer for non-believers. And then we're going to go ahead and pray for the believers so that God can help us receive this power, this new kind of anointing that he's going to give us so that we can go forth and spread the gospel to the ends of the earth so we can usher in that return of christ let's pray if you're a non-believer if you're a person that has never heard about christ 
and would like to accept Christ at this moment, go ahead and repeat after me. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Jesus, come into my heart. I repent from my sinful ways. And I accept and acknowledge that you are the Son of God. That Christ, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. I renounce from my old ways. I surrender my heart to you. And I pray in this day that you would come into my heart and begin to do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to have another prayer for the believers and if you just came to Christ now you're a believer already so you are part of this prayer as well and you will never know what God will do with someone who gives them his heart fully surrendered submitted to Christ let's pray Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your message. We thank you because you speak to us in great ways. And yes, though the message had a 50-50, God, had some good news but had some bad news, but you're all about the good news, Father, right now because there still is time and there still is hope before that evil day comes. Father, you protect your people. You take care of us. I pray that you would pour onto us a powerful anointing, Father Lord, not for our glory, but for yours. That you would use us in great and powerful ways, Father Lord, so we would be able to accomplish everything you have for us. So we would be able to experience your power. So we would be able to experience and heal and raise from the dead and do those things that you did in those last days here on earth so that many will stay in awe and wonder and accept you because of the revelations that you are giving through us in these last days with your power we thank you again father look at the ones that just came to you now fill them up father fill them up what a great love what a great love you have for each of us father we thank you we thank you jesus in the name of jesus amen well that was today's word tune in tomorrow that we will be on revelations again i know i know i was like god are you sure he's like it needs to be said it needs to be read revelation needs to be read needs to be taught and what better of a time than this because the whole point is that there's real good news now but let's not wait till there's not too much of a good news you know what i mean so tune in tomorrow and god bless you